Hello there taxidermists and gentle peeps, it's Neil Woodman here from Digital Taxidermy um, and today we are going to take a look at using 3D Builder to convert OBJs to STLs, uh, a little look at the process and some of the benefits of doing so. So first of all I should probably uh, take a look at what uh, OBJs and STLs are. So OBJs are a mesh output from some modeling programs. Uh, not all modeling programs will export direct to STL. Uh, it depends on what their basis is. Um, examples include Adobe Medium, um, among others. Um, and there, there are reasons why you might want to export to OBJ. Um, so <clears throat> in this example so here is a bunch of models that i've been playing with today um i made these over christmas uh and for whatever reason haven't haven't got round to releasing them yet so i'm going through and uh sorting them all out these were all sculpted sculpted in adobe medium um and as you can see they're lovely and colorized so uh one of the advantages of uh obj's is that you can paint them uh, and this this painting can uh be good for renders images displays um you can also use them in other digital media it's a much higher quality mesh so um we can actually we can zoom right in here if we turn on the wireframe and you can see it's built up of very, very fine triangles and faces. Um, so you can see how dense the mesh is. It's turned all that color uh, black, completely ghosted it out. So uh, that makes it a much higher um, resolution image uh, and, and mesh. And what this does as well is it's a much larger file size so uh, in preparation for getting these things ready for print and ready for distribution um, OBJ is actually supported by a lot of slices uh, so you can just dump an OBJ into your slicer uh, and it will slice away quite happily uh, and then you can print direct from that. So if it's for your personal use, uh, there's no real reason why you would necessarily need to convert to STL. Um, however, as I stated, STL is a, a less dense mesh uh, and thus can reduce the file sizes a huge amount. So as part of our distribution, um, we will then reduce the file size because that becomes um, much more convenient for storage, downloading, and then also for uh, end users to store on their computer as well. Um, so this is how we're going to go about it. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take this flower here as an example. Uh, so if I just open up that one okay so um, we have this flower we'll just import the model um, <clears throat> so this flower is just a bit over 75 megabytes okay uh, and you can see that it's not it's not even that big um, so 60 millimeters by 65 millimeters um, it's not a particularly big file but again we can zoom right in on the mesh here and we see that it's incredibly dense so we want to try and reduce that so um, first thing ha that happened <clears throat> we imported it we didn't have the little red box around it that means that there's no issues with the mesh it's totally manifold and 3d builder is happy with that we don't have to fix it all if you uh, import your model and there's a little red box around it, there's usually a little dialog box here saying uh, click here to repair the model. Click it, wait for it to repair, job done, happy days. So how do we take this from an OBJ and then the next key thing is reduce the file size. So 
um, to reduce file size further from the uh, standard sort of STL compression um, what we are going to do is use this tool uh, which is the simplify now we have an issue um, with the way that OBJ is defined um, you can't just use the simplify tool straight off okay you see it doesn't matter how far I move this slider it does absolutely nothing okay so we'll just cancel that so how do we reduce the amount of faces in the mesh well the first thing is we have to save the model out okay so uh, we get it into the place that we want to uh, we give it the name that we want DT give that a capital um, <clears throat> now we've got the, the formats um, 3MF as well your slicer will pick up but I find that that gives a lot of boundary details as well which can be an issue um, and so STL format is most well known most popular um, and it works so we're going to use that um, so we save that out <clears throat> saving away okay so that's saved and that's taken that single file down from 75 megabytes to 25 megabytes so we've already decreased it by two-thirds in size okay the next step is we have to close the OBJ original file and open the STL Okay, so now we've got the STL, uh, you'll notice it's lost its coloration, um, which is just natural because it's not storing that extra information. Um, and then we can get the wireframe. So we see that it has retained this kind of grid-like um, appearance that OBJs uh, use to make their mesh. Okay. Um, so we're trying to break up the density of that mesh. You can see where this was modeled in different sections and I've used a uh, different density, uh, different resolution for the different sections um, again to try and keep the overall file size down. Um, so we're going to uh, edit and simplify and for this one um, <clears throat> we just want to go to a uh, reduction level of one um, and you can see already with just the reduction level of one how much that has reduced the amount of faces there okay so if we go back to zero very dense back to one there you go so it's um repolymerized the uh, face of it uh, <clears throat> to add denser vertices at points where there's uh, tighter radiuses um, and this is a very useful feature you can use this on all sorts of STLs um, any sorts of models to reduce them in file size now we can go further but um, as you can imagine, the further down the scale you go, the more vertices get removed and thus eventually you reach a point where you lose detail. So if we go to level two, okay, you see you've lost even more vertices. <clears throat> now at this point, we're still not really using losing detail. Um, Often I find you can go to uh, level three um, and you're, you're really down to the bare necessities here. So um, at this point, you still get a pretty good reproduction. Um, because these are organic shapes and I want to try and preserve the, um, the textures a lot more, um, we're only going to go down to level one. Um, but just for an example, if I take it all the way to maximum, um, and we'll see what that does. See here, it's just turned everything into triangles. There's, there's no real curves on there. 
you have the large curve of this and you have some some of the sweeps on the leaves but all the dots have been turned into triangles back to three And there you go, you've got some of the details again, um, but if we can get a look from the side, you can see that these curves have been flattened out in various places. So we'll go to one, and you're starting to retain those curves, and you'll get a bit much better fidelity that way. Um, so it's up to you, really. It depends on what type of model you're making. Um, if there's lots of flat surfaces, then you can uh, take this slider higher. As I say, for this particular one, because it's organic, I want to retain some more detail. Okay, and we can already see that that has taken the face count down by about a quarter, uh, by about three quarters, sorry, um, <clears throat> which is quite a lot. So we just click reduce faces. Okay. And then we go save as. Ooh, one thing that we always want to do before we do that is to settle the object. Uh, and settling the object, make sure that it is flat and consistent on the base plate. So then we go to save as. Um, and we've already got it in the <coughs> folder that we want to put it in. Um, STL, um, flower 2 what it already was I want to replace it okay and that's taken that model down from 25 megabytes to uh, 8 megabytes so by doing that process we've gone from 75 megabytes all the way down to 8 megabytes and in effect not lost any detail Okay, we've still got uh, all the key features of the details. The mesh has been made less dense where it's not required. Um, so that's it really. Uh, nice and easy, but it's a, a simple step that you can use uh, to reduce the file size of your models. Um, <clears throat> so you might want to keep the uh, original model um, that is for your particular modeling program. Uh, and then export um, and reduce it down to a usable STL uh, and then just delete all the excess files in between, uh, save yourself some disk space uh, and make your models easily transferable to your customers. Um, it also, the smaller file size makes slicing quicker and easier, um, it saves storage, it saves time um, all in all, in general, this is good practice. Um, so have a play with that. Have a play with those sliders. See how you get on. Um, incidentally, uh, these files, there's a whole bunch more of them. There's various flowers, alien fungus, and uh, plant life that we've been working on. Uh, these will be coming to our store really soon. Uh, keep your eye out for those. There's uh, some really interesting stuff in there. Um, so check you over on www.digitaltaxidermy.co.uk um, <clears throat> If you've liked this tutorial, don't forget to uh, like and leave a comment and see if, if there's anything you would like to see me cover in the future uh, as this tutorial series grows. Um, and uh, subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, we'll see you in the future with another tutorial video. Okay, take care then. Bye-bye now. Like the video, follow me around. Press the bell, it makes no sound. Like the video, press subscribe. I don't know why I am alive. <laughs>